recorded, it's kind of a delicate topic, delicate subject. I call it pixel hacking. Um, we've seen this a lot in the kind of community of Facebook advertisers and people are confused by what's going on. And I want to show this. I want to show this to explain how things happen when you are subject to pixel hacking. What I mean by that is when on your stats in your Facebook ads, you all of a sudden see events show up where uh, purchases are attributed to your ads that actually don't happen. And then you dig into your pixel data and you discover that there are purchase events that are fired on product pages or on uh, a page, you know, anywhere from where it shouldn't normally fire purchase events. And the way this is being done, this is uh, being done by other marketers who are whatever motives they have. I, I don't really know and understand the explanations that I've heard say that they do this to get on your targeting lists, on your remarketing lists. So what they do is they come over to their Facebook profile, they click on an ad, let's just pick one. And then they, they come to your to your website here and here are your your Facebook pixels happen to be here and then they open up the console and I'm not going to continue this with this website because I don't want to actually create malicious data uh, but I'm going to show you here on on this demo website um, and they come on over here and open up the the browser console like this and then what they do is they come in here and fire manually a Facebook event that can be a real purchase event. It can be any value they attribute to it. They fire the, pay, uh, the Facebook event here and it will show up in your Facebook pixel helper. It will show up in your Facebook test tool over here. It'll show up everywhere where you actually, um, you know, see the pixel. So let's reload this here. So we start from scratch so I can show you how it works how it's done and I'll show you also remedy uh, to some extent. Now, just to further explain this, this here is actually the Shopify pixel that's in the basic Shopify integration here. You see the P Facebook pixel ID is plugged in here. So that's how it's firing on this particular website right now. And uh, with that demonstration, I want to show you this has nothing to do at all with whether or not you're using Trackify. If someone comes to your website and clicks on one of your ads, and then uh, plugs in nefarious events here, they're going to then disturb your, um, uh, your data because just like I did on this uh, website, I clicked on the ad, right? So that means anything that fires here is going to be attributed to the ad that I clicked on. And so if this was that website, uh, this what would be exactly what's going to happen there, right? So here's what what you would do or what they do. And again, I'm not showing this here at all to encourage uh, you to do this, but I'm just going to show you. I, I just want to show you the example of how this works. So this here, you put the content ID. So there you go. That way it's even attributed to this product and uh, you get on the specific retargeting list that would be um, subject to this particular product, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm firing a fake purchase event, fake purchase event into this pixel right there. So before I trigger it, before I let go of it, let's uh, double check and make sure that we are actually seeing the events also in the Facebook uh, test tool inside the events manager. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, you, you should look into this because it's a great tool to see and really see what uh, what which Facebook events, which pixel events are actually coming into Facebook and not just seeing them getting fired in the Facebook pixel helper over here, but over here in the test tool, you can see which events are actually coming into Facebook like that. So here's my fake purchase. It's a custom event. It's not going to actually create an actual uh, standard purchase event. But if I just change this up here and make it a real purchase event, it would make no difference from what it does here. So number one, I trigger it and here's my fake purchase event, ta-da, and here's all the data. And now when we go back to Facebook, uh, to the test tool, we see it here as well. And it's a wonderful uh, event. It even matches the uh, to one, of more, one or more of the catalogs that are set up with this pixel. 
uh, and it's a custom event and you can see all everything is fine here um, there's nobody is going to be for the wiser uh, as to knowing that this is not a real purchase event now in this particular case i fired it on the product page so that should be a, a reason to be suspicious here and um uh, and so that would be one way to kind of see uh, that these purchase events are actually fake. Now, these, uh, this tool here in particular, the test events tool in Facebook, only shows the events that are attributed to you, the logged in user, as you are uh, in this tool here, right? So that's why only this event is showing here. But you can also go and dig, dig a little deeper and go into the Facebook analytics you click that button here on the left of the events manager it takes you right into that same pixel and shows you all the analytics tools and right here in the activity there's a tool called event debugging so the event debugger here lets you lets you look at all the events that come in here and you can see here this is the fake purchase that shows up here as well now what's the difference between the event debugger and the test tool the difference is that the test tool shows only your events that are triggered by your user on the websites over here, whereas the event debugger shows you the events from everybody. So you can even, you know, uh, uh, single out specific purchases. So this is just a test pixel, right? So there are no recent um, actual purchase events here, but then you can, you know, you can see the fake purchase event here. And let's just fire a real purchase event because it really doesn't matter for this pixel. And we're gonna show you also how this can really be abused to create fairly massive, I mean, it's all relative, right? But uh, so this here is now going to fire an actual real purchase event, right? Bam, here it is. That's my real purchase event. It shows up over here in the test tool. Here it is. And this event will now show up in uh well it shows up here anyway but it will show up as the filter when i filter this here for uh for real purchase this can sometimes take a, a moment here to to actually get in there uh, but it'll show up eventually so this will be a, a real purchase and this is how you can monitor the events now if you're using shopify basic pixel integration or if you're using trackify really doesn't make a difference um uh, you will see, you'll be able to spot the difference in the way that the events are uh, structured, the actual event parameters. Let me see if we can go back to all events so I can show you a little bit here. So, so you can see here, um, yeah, so there, there is just no purchase event anywhere here. Anyway, so you can, you can basically over here on the right side, you see all of the purchase event or all of the event parameters that are fired with this event and you can also see the value here right so this is the value and um, with these parameters you'll be able to spot uh, a purchase events that are not real purchase events and of course they're not going to be called fake right so they're going to show up here as real purchase events they might have a value that doesn't match any of your products we've seen a lot of events that are fired manually that are set to $99 US dollar as a uh, specific value. And then you, you'll also see a discrepancy between the event makeup here between the parameters that are fired with this um, um, nefarious purchase event, the fake purchase event, as opposed to the real purchase event that is generated um, uh, you know, when it's real. So here it is. Now it came in. This purchase event is now showing up in this tool as well. That's the other one that we fired. And uh, the parameters here are just as fake as they are here, right? The only difference between these two is that this here is a custom event because we called it fake purchase. But this here is an actual real purchase event. So if I was, if I had done this um, uh, the way I showed you before by clicking on an ad and then generate this fake event on the page where I landed on the product page, this event here would be attributed to the ad that I clicked on. It would definitely show up there and um, and mess you up and confuse you, right? So now, what's a remedy? Um, a remedy is to create a custom conversion for this, right? Okay, so you can go over here and create a custom conversion and you want to base this on a, an actual purchase event a standard purchase event 
And then one thing that you can do here is you can try to see if that works. You can just uh, narrow this down for the URL where the purchase event fired to contain thank you like this with an underscore, right? Because the shop, the actual Shopify thank you page uh, contains this piece in the URL. So this here would filter out uh, and uh, filter out any purchase events that do not come from a URL that contains this. And so with that, this uh, fake purchase event here that we had, you know, this shows, uh, let's see, current URL. This here shows, this is a little bit hard to show because it's it's cut off, but if you triple click on this, you can see here if, you, if I hover, it's kind of small, but you triple click on this and it actually highlights the whole thing. Then you can copy it and uh, and paste it into a notepad or, you know, somewhere where you can actually see the whole path. But you can see even here when you just hover, it says collections, all products. So this does not, this URL does not contain thank you. And so this particular uh, custom conversion filter would uh, eliminate any purchase events that don't come from a thank you page. If you have a little bit more complicated setup, you can also use a filter that is based on an event parameter. Now for this, uh, you should use uh, Trackify for this, but if you do use Trackify, you can use this filter right here and just narrow the purchase events <clears throat> down to all event to, to any purchase events that contain Trackify in the content name, right? This would also narrow down <clears throat> all purchase events to only legitimate purchase events. Um, if you're using, you know, an, an upsell funnel app like OCU or Cartoke or Intercard, uh, where thank you is not necessarily part of the um, URL where the purchase, the legitimate purchase events fire, uh, then that, this would be another way to nail this down as well. So I just wanted to, um, you know, record this video to inform you not to encourage you to do this yourself. I, I think it's, it's quite useless actually. And, um, you know, just kind of causes confusion. Now, while this is actually, it's now that I have this fired once, I can fire, you know, 30 more uh, purchase events in, in, in three seconds by just doing this. And you can see it's just going to uh, be a bunch of purchase events that are fired there. So, so there's, there's some, some easy way to do some damage. Um, but in the overall big, big scheme, hopefully the events that are fired manually like this will always be much less, much fewer than the events that um, you're generating in your sales. And so statistically speaking, hopefully it doesn't matter too much and it doesn't mess you up too much. But again, it's an, there's an easy way to create the custom conversion for it. And then, so what do you do with the custom conversion once you have it? Well, you put them into, you bring them into the um, events column, uh, sorry, the report column in your ads manager report you can do that real easy. There's another video that I've recorded the other day that shows that in detail. And um, so that's what you can do. And you can also um, actually use it in your ad sets to optimize for that uh, custom conversion. If you're concerned that these events are actually messing with your Facebook optimization, then just create a custom conversion that narrows down only the legitimate purchase events and then put that into your ad sets and select it instead of the standard purchase event. All right. So I hope this helps. This is Thomas Barger. Let me know, you know, let, let me know your comments and suggestions about this. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, happy about this practice and I don't want to encourage anyone to do it. I don't see that there is much upside to doing this, uh, on a website that you don't own. On, not, on, not on a website that you own either, but just uh, let, let me know, uh, leave a comment, letting, letting me know what you think and have a little bit of a discussion here and see, um, you know, if anyone comes up with an, a better idea to find a remedy against this. This is Thomas Bartke signing off. Thanks a lot for watching.